Views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff or management of KLAV. Welcome to Aspects of Writing with your host, James Kelly. For the next 60 minutes, we'll explore every aspect of writing, including how to create, format, and even sell your work. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230. Or toll free, 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's get right. Here's your host, James Kelly. Hello, and welcome to Aspects of Writing. This is your host, James Kelly. On tonight's show, my guests are going to be author Kevin Parsons and via telephone um, from Los Angeles, author Eric Bowman. Um, Kevin is the author of Life Choice, Pursuing Your Passions, and has written a children's story, Ken Johnson and Roxy the Rocker. And then Eric is not only an author, but he is the owner of a new company called AuthR.com, and we're going to talk more about that later on in the show. Uh, the topic of our show tonight is funding your project and agents. Our panel will discuss the various ways to fund your project and offer advice on whether you should acquire an agent, and if so, how. I always like to start the show with a few quotes. Uh, Kevin, would you like to take the first one? Sure. There are books of which the backs and covers are by far the best parts. <laughs> and that's by Charles Dickens. All right. And the second one is Tom Clancy wrote, The difference between fiction and reality. Fiction has to make sense. Eric, are you there? Uh, I'm here. How would you like to take number three? <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, author Robert Benchley wrote, it, it took me 15 years to discover that I had no talent for writing, but I couldn't give it up because by that time I was too famous. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin, how about number four? Hell hath no fury like a hustler with a literary agent. And that's by Frank Sinatra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one is former uh, baseball player and author Jim Bouton wrote uh, about money and fame. Back then, if you had a sore arm, the only people concerned were you and your wife. Now it's you, your wife, your agent, your investment, investment counselor, your stockbroker, and your publisher. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you are just now tuning in, you are listening to Aspects of Writing with me, your host, James Kelly, right here on KLIV in Las Vegas. Uh, before we get into the topic of the day, funding your project and agents, I'd like to introduce my guests and let them tell you a little bit about themselves. And when they have finished, um, I'll have a few questions for them. Kevin, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Right. I wrote and self-published a book called Ken Johnson and Roxy the Rocker, and it's a children's illustrated book for children four to six years old. And... Uh, self-published that, and I actually used it as a marketing tool for my construction business first, and then the story was compelling, and so I published it without the usual um, propaganda on the back about how wonderful my company was, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and put our bios on the back and, and sold it commercially. Okay. And then uh, I've also been published in n numerous magazines. Uh, I'm a motorcycle enthusiast, and we'll probably get to that, but Honda Red Rider magazine, Racer X magazine, uh, cycle news, and then last month I was a feature article in uh, American Motorcyclist magazine. Oh, I had cool. the cover and a six-page feature story right. with pictures. And you just finished a writers' conference as well, where you were a uh, host, right? The Las Vegas Writers' Conference. Yeah, I emceed a bunch of it, so right. that was Absolutely. really exciting. Yeah. And Eric, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure thing. Um, I, I actually backed into writing and publishing back in 2003 when I launched a training company. Um, I actually hired a writer and published a PDF textbook distributed exclusively as part of an online training program. Um, I sold that company, and then in 2005, I personally wrote the curriculum for the Certified Entrepreneur Program. Um, I spent the next few years teaching, consulting for business startups, and training people on SEO and what's now called social media marketing. Um, I learned a lot about both the writing and the publishing process from starting my own imprint to uh, turning a book into a bestseller. Um, I discovered that, that funding and then selling a writer's book were two of the biggest obstacles a writer faces. Uh, most writers are not business savvy. Right. That's why I developed author.com. Um, Eric, when you, you, how many books have you written now? <laughs> um, I think about eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And are, are all of them uh, along the field of, of the publishing industry? Uh, well, I mean, th th there's, um, 
There's two that are specifically targeted at entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, the last three that I put out are just simple eBooks. Those are targeted specifically at, at, at publishing, um, uh, well, r writing your book, getting, getting funding for your book, and uh, publishing your book as an eBook, and then turning it into a bestseller. And we're actually going to get into it a little bit later in, in, in this show because I'm very interested in what you have to tell our guests when it comes to funding. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to ask Kevin um, what inspired him to write his first novel. Yeah, I didn't allude to that in our, our biography period, but I've written five novels, and they're five manuscripts. And uh, it was about 10 years ago, and I, I wanted to write novels, uh, Christian fiction, yes. and mostly about men who overcome. They're, they're more character-driven, and it's about men overcoming odds and, and, and overcoming uh, obstacles in their life mm -hmm. and becoming better men. So I started that, and uh, I've been, the first one was a series, a three-book series, and then I've written two other books as well. And then the children's story. And then the children's book, yeah. And that was the one I talked about where I wanted to use it to market my own company. Oh, okay. And then turned it around. Yeah, because you actually do have an agent for your other... Yes, and so I, I uh, to pitch my books, I went to uh, writer's conferences, and I've, I found a guy, Terry Burns, is my literary agent from Heartline Literary Agency. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give an up-and-coming writer or author um, trying to break in the business? Uh, that it takes persistence. That uh, If you have one book in you and you think you're going to uh, write that book and get published, you may be in for a surprise because uh, my experience has been, well, it, for instance, it's like running a marathon. You don't just uh, put on some running shoes and run a marathon. You might run one and get leg cramps and not finish. You might have troubles. And, and it's the same with your book. It's a skill. And so you may, you may write a, a good manuscript, but it's not a great one. And so you can pitch that and you can work at that, but you got to keep writing and keep writing other manuscripts and, and, and then attending conferences, attending critique groups, working on your skill, working on your craft, and developing better and better books. Mm -hmm. And you may never, ever publish the first or second or third book. Where can our listeners learn more about your books? Uh, they could get on my website, which is uh, kevinbparsons.com. Uh, Okay. And then I'm blogging every day, too, at kevinbparsons.blogspot.com. All right. And I know you have a project coming up called 50 States in 50 Weeks. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Well, my passion is motorcycles. I started racing and riding motorcycles when I was 13. And when I was 16, I went to a movie theater with a friend of mine, and we saw the movie Easy Rider, which is a terrible movie, but it had great cinematography <laughs> of these guys riding in the country. And we were hooked. We wanted to ride motorcycles around the country and so we decided that when we graduated from high school that's what we were going to do but we had girlfriends and the girlfriends turned into wives and, <laughs> and then we had kids <laughs> then we had a business and so that dream kind of <laughs> the dream really kind of died and so uh, then later in life I realized that uh, I could probably get some time away from my business when it was successful and do it but business was going so good it was really hard to break away yeah. and then in 2009 our business here in las vegas we were in residential construction business mm -hmm. so that business evaporated oh yeah. yeah absolutely and then about two years ago my wife said why don't we let's go now the kids are grown the business is gone and we, you know we, we did some good financial investments and, and smart work with our money and so we're okay and so let's uh let's do it now and so uh this coming sunday is when we're going to start on our where can people learn weeks. more about 50 states in 50 weeks uh, they can go to 50 50 states in 50 weeks.com and that's 50 states in 50 weeks.com okay. all right and i'll take a right to our blog great now eric what inspired you to write um what inspired me to write uh, well i know yours is a, they're more technical um yeah well, I mean, when you get right down to it, it was financial gain. Wow. Um, sorry. <laughs> that's great. No, that, it's funny. <laughs> well, hey, we, that, that, that's honest, yeah. and that's good. There's a lot of people out who write just for the money. There's so. so many people that talk about they write for the passion, da-da-da-da, and you need to write for money. A lot of people need to write for money, you know. <laughs> An honest know. person. <laughs> passionate about writing. Yeah, I need um, to see that check in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> But I know you're also self-published. Is that correct, Eric? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I established my own imprints so I could publish without seeming like I was self-publishing. But, but realistically, it was self-published. Mm -hmm. um, all, all of my books are. Okay. Um, 
So I guess the advice you would give someone who wants to to be a writer, at least from the vantage point you have, is just jump in and do it. Well, actually, no. I mean, see, I, I'm first. Off, I, I'm I'm impressed with Kevin that he actually has an agent because I've never experienced that. So I, I'd like to hear his <laughs> perspective on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but realistically, for, from a from an advice standpoint, um, the first thing I tell people is to plan it before you write it, okay. and to figure out who your audience is. Uh, what what they'll be most interested in and try to involve them in the planning stages of your book. Because if you write a book that has no audience, nobody's going to read it. And I feel that books are re- re- written to be read. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, that's true. I know an author who wrote a book about abortion, and no mm. one wants to read it. And so it's <laughs> supposed to be this profound book, and it, I'm sure it is, and it could be a great book, but no one's going to buy it. And then when you pitch it to a, a publisher or an agent, they say, they sound cold-hearted and callous, but they're in the business of selling books. Right. Yeah. So you do have to find a market that's willing to buy your book. And then a lot of people will write too few or too many words. And, mm. and they have limitations on, uh, they have parameters of how, how many words a book should be written. So if you have this book that's 120,000 words and it's great and you just can't take any words out of it and they want <laughs> 80, you're out of luck. But they, yeah. uh, you know, a, a publishing house puts a lot of m- time and effort and money into the project, right. and you really don't. Uh, unlike when you're right. self-published, so I can understand from where they're coming from. You know, right? Y- mm-hmm. y- you have to meet their parameters. So yes, and so that you have to be aware of that. Um, Eric, where can listeners learn more about your books? Well, I mean, you, you could certainly go to my my main website, which is Eric Bowman. It's E R I K Bowman B O B as in boy O W M A N dot com. Or directly to author, which is a u t h r dot com. Okay, um, I'd like to remind our listeners that you're listening to Aspects of Writing here on KLAV uh, with me, your host James Kelly. Uh, l- okay, let's talk a little bit about our topic tonight, which is funding your project and agents. And I'd like to tell the listeners that if you have questions or comments about the show, you can call in at seven zero two seven three one twelve thirty, or if you're out of the uh, prefix or out of state, you can call in at one eight Six six eight two zero five five two eight. 520 All right, we'll go right into funding your project. Eric, you have a unique concept because I actually discovered you on the Internet because you actually created a company to help with the funding. Um, would you like to elaborate a little bit on that? Uh, sure. Um, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, is that the two biggest obstacles writers face are finding the funding up front to write their book, to schedule the time, to actually to block out time to, to actually – write their book. And then, then at the other end of the spectrum is when they get done with it, to try to sell it. Um, and so I, I created Author to address that. Um, Author allows you to do crowdfunding to find other people, friends, family, uh, fans, and followers to, to actually donate money. Uh, usually it's with the expectation that they'll receive a copy of your book as an incentive to donate. Um, and then there's also the point about pre-selling your book, which is a huge, huge Thing to actually pre-sell your book to your friends, family, and followers and fans, um, and, and most a lot of authors don't even consider that because they're going after the book advance, which right. I think we all know that that's kind of uh, out there most of the time. Um, and, and, and today, at the best, it's five or ten thousand. Exactly. Well, one of the things that's unique also about what you're you're trying to do is unlike we're going to say the words Kickstarter and Indiegogo, your company actually, shh, I know, shh, uh, actually uh, doesn't hold the money in escrow. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Oh, absolutely. Um, because, I mean, w- when, you're, when you're actually writing a book, you need that money right away. And if you set up a campaign through one of those other services, which will be re- rename, I mean, remain <laughs> unnamed, um, if, you, if you start a, a campaign through one of those services and you set it for 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, if you ever see that money at all, you won't see that money for 30, 60, or 90 days. With Author, we do an immediate transfer. If you get a $20 donation today, we transfer that money through PayPal directly to your PayPal account, and you end up with that $20 in your hand. Right. So you're not waiting for the funds to actually start your project. You actually can start money immediately to start your project. Yeah, and I think, I think that, was a bit, that, that is a big failure with the other companies that are out there is that, I mean, they, they have that float where they actually earn the interest on your money that they're holding for you. Well, and they and charge then, a huge percentage, too. It, it is a large percentage, and if you don't raise the money, 
that you that you your target goal uh, of, of let's say you want to raise five thousand dollars and you raise forty five hundred dollars, there there will basically refund all the money to the donors and you'll end up with nothing e- even after all the effort you put into promoting your page. Absolutely, you walk away with nothing in your pocket. Yeah. And w- the one thing I know for certain with those two companies, I won't say their name again, uh, <laughs> that they right. really take 10% because I think it's the one company takes 27 and then the company that does the funding for them gets, I don't know, six and a half or something. So it ends up being almost 10% but that they take of the money you raised. So when you're looking at $3,000, you know, you, you figure you've, you've already lost, you know, 300 of that. Um, right. That's what's kind of unique about your company, too. The other thing I think I like what you were t- telling me about what you do, as opposed you don't take a percentage. Can you explain a little bit about that? Sure. Um, what we've determined, we, we did, we did some, 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 some research into this, and we priced our service at fourteen ninety five per month. And we don't charge, again, we don't charge a percentage of any of the money you raise. So... Um, so it's just a flat fourteen ninety five per month to use the service, and with that comes uh, an author page. So you get you get a, a, a page to add some credibility to to yourself as a, as a, as a writer. Um, plus, you get the book page, and the book page itself uh, transforms. So you may set it up as a as a campaign to raise donations for your your book project, but once your campaign ends, say in thirty or sixty days, that page will automatically transform into a book pre-sales page. And so I think you can continue. Oh, go ahead. Well, I think what the listeners need to understand and what's different with your company as opposed to some of the other funding companies is that when that campaign ends, your association with that company ends. Mm-hmm. So that's why yours cool. is unique in that you are able to transform that into something else as opposed to just being a way to raise the money. Now you have a site to keep your book online um, and continue with it from there. Yeah, and I've got search engine optimization background and social media marketing background personally, and I know how much effort it takes for anyone, let alone an author, to promote a, a book donation, a crowdfunding campaign page. I mean, they might spend three hours a day just promoting that page, and then when their campaign ends, all that effort they put into it, if you used one of the other services, is out the window. It's, it's, it's gone. But with our service, all that effort – continues. Uh, all your rankings in Google, all the, the links you've created at, at other sites and forums and, 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 um, and blogs, those are all still valid and functional and working for you to pre-sell your book. And then once you actually publish your book, you can use that same page to market and, and sell your book because we have direct links to wherever you happen to be selling your book at. So in that sense, basically, it's no different than if you created a website anyway. It really, it really is. If, if you don't have the wherewithal or, or the time to create your own blog site or your, your own website, um, we give you an author page for free. You don't have to pay anything for that ever. And then um, we give you a book marketing page, in essence, which has a description of you, a description of your book project. Um, it has You can upload a video. I mean, a lot of the same services that you can get somewhere else, like the, the video hosting and things like that. But on top of that... Um, we can we provide you with uh, a QR codes if you wanted to put QR codes in your printed book to make it interactive. That's all included in the monthly fee, um, and we actually have a, a book proposal uh, builder to help you again. Like I said earlier, plan it before you write it. Right, um, and that's all included as well. And there's uh, also a, an ebook cover designer, which is all built in, um, and that's free to use as well. Yeah, so you, you have uh, – you know, I think it's what's really unique about this service is the fact that you can continue with this. The the reason is is what we talked about earlier today is that you, your, your background is in SEO and the fact that you have already driven business to that site for that author. So if they continue with that site afterwards, they already have, um, I guess, a ranking is what you would say. Yeah, in fact, I, I think what I mentioned to you, which is um – once you create a and, and activate your, your, your book project page at Author, um, you, based on our SEO that we've already done, uh, you will, your book project will be ranked in Google probably within a week, may, maybe a little bit longer, but typically it's, it's a week or less. Um, and that will automatically start driving people searching for the topics within your book to your book page. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Kevin, when you self-published your book, 
Oh, how how did you go about? It? Was the funding out of your pocket or? It's totally, one hundred percent out of my pocket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest story you're going to hear from most self-published authors is that they footed the bill. Right, yeah. and the the disadvantage of that is, I mean, you're on your own. And I and that when I did it, it was my first book. I didn't know what I was doing. I needed it for my own business, which it was a great marketing tool. Mm-hmm. It really worked well because. Uh, instead of giving your customer a brochure that he's going to throw right into the wastebasket, you give him a book mm-hmm. that he's never going to throw away. He's going to take it home. Now, your advertising medium is inside his house. Mm-hmm. So it was a great advantage for that. So, But as far as selling it commercially, I put it on Amazon. You know, I spent all the money to get it published, and it languished on Amazon. I have boxes of books. <laughs> 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 so I'm I am the horror story that people talk about. You self-publish and you have all these books, and I, I've and, heard that so many times. Yeah, and and it, you know it's a couple. Th- it's a children's book. It's not very big, and there's a couple thousand of them. It's not the end of the world because <laughs> I've I'm in the Henderson Writers Group, and there's some horror stories of people that have published like 30 books and they give them to their friends and relatives who probably hate them by now, <laughs> and they have garage full of books. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and so it's just. Uh, it's but I think the sad thing is, is it's not necessarily that the book isn't even good. It's just that no one has heard of it or no, right. or getting it distributed. Because we've talked about this on past shows as well, in that it's difficult now to get your books in the bookstores, I- even in a local level. You know, it's very difficult. Right, and then sh- I mean, everyone's wrestling for shelf space, and so you might even get in and you're s- s- back in a corner somewhere. Right. So. Yeah, and, and unless you do an event, no one's going to even know who you are, right. and the stores aren't so keen on events anymore that's why i think you're going to see ebook publishing really dominate here very soon so it's really taking off yeah, yeah. yeah my concern and i think it's not as bad as i thought but is that anybody can now publish a book and so anybody does mm-hmm. and the quality of books can suffer but i i just believe that they're going to fade away i mean y- you can e-publish a book and it doesn't cost you anything but you don't get anything either so I think those people are going to fade away, and the cream is going to rise at the top. Right. I, I'm yeah. sure that it'll, like you said. Uh, but what I, I, I like, though, about companies like what um, Eric has started is the fact that you're giving people an opportunity that they may not have otherwise. Because we're going to go into agents here in a minute, but you know, uh, Kevin, that it isn't that easy to find an agent. I mean, no. you, you went to great lengths to get your agent. Yes. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read a little bit about agents, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the agents. And, and, and Eric, you actually have something you need to bring up, I believe, about your company and agents and how you've actually helped them. But I'm going to read this a little bit. It's uh, about agents. This comes off the Internet from, and this is not nothing to do with the drugs, but it's freebase.com. <laughs> <laughs> a literary agent often synonymous with publishing agent, is an agent who represents writers and their written work to publishers, theatrical producers, and film producers, and assists in the sale and and deal negotiation of the same. Literary agents most often represent novelists, screenwriters, and major nonfiction writers. They are paid a fixed percentage, 10 to 20 percent, 15 percent as usual, of the proceeds of sales. They negotiate on behalf of their clients. While literary agents exist largely to provide services to authors, they also assist publishing houses and others in expediting the process of review, publication, distribution of authors' works. Um, Quite a few well-known, powerful, and lucrative publishing houses do not accept non-agent submissions, and I've experienced that myself. You know, you have to have an agent. Mm -hmm. I have a good story behind that one. A knowledgeable agent knows the market and can be a source of valuable career advice and guidance. Being a publishable author doesn't automatically make someone an expert on modern publishing contracts and practices. Um, and I think if you're self-published, and, and I know, Eric, you're self-published, you do – I understand this completely in that there, there are some contracts that are difficult to understand. Yes. Because um, I have dealt with Borders, and I have dealt with Barnes & Nobles in the past. So, you know, um, mm-hmm. it can be complicated. Um, here's what William Kane of – EzineArticles.com has to say, The truth is that literary agents are people, just like you and me. I think so. Uh, They have lives outside the office, interests, and concerns. When you hear them in a podcast or read an online review, sometimes they'll let slip some of their personal information. You can use that to your advantage if you can link it to your work. And here's an example. Let's say you are writing a comic novel, and you come across a comment by an agent in which he says, I just don't read enough funny stuff these days, and I love humor and fiction. 
Well, what a fun fact. This is the guy for you. You've got an, to add him to your short list of agents and queries. An example of that is if you're writing fiction, you want to go out there and you want to scour the market for agents who deal specifically with fiction, just like you do publishers deal with fiction, because they're going to have your interest at heart, and that's, that's the person you want to market your work for you. Right. Yeah, and the challenge is to find the right agent that fits for you. Mm-hmm. A lot of times uh, at conferences, you'll go pitch to, s- to an agent, and you'll tell them, like, for instance, I write Christian uh, thriller. And he goes, well, I, I don't do thriller. <laughs> Great. <laughs> you know, you're just wasting everybody's time. Right. And so it's very important to study that agent uh, on his website and find out what he is representing. And then if, you've, if you get a right fit, you've got a head start there when you when you pitch to him. Well, and advice is, is to do your homework, browse the web. Um, you, you're s- going to stumble across some fun facts about literary agents, uh, facts that might help you get that agent to sell your book. Um, you want to make it fun. And do not pay for an agent. Um, no. You no, know, you haven't done that, have you? No. Uh, no, see, I, I, I learned my lesson, yeah. <laughs> and so the, the agent makes a percentage of the books he sells, and that's why – it's kind of a hard sell because an agent doesn't want to take a lot of risk on you. He's not going to make a cent until he sells your book. So, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a little story here about this is a true story that honestly happened with me. Um, I didn't feel like when I started publishing, I had I'd set up my own office, my own publishing company in Atlanta, Georgia, and I didn't feel that I needed an agent. Um, but then the book that I was 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 pushing. Um, what happened was is I thought, well, this is easy. I'll just go out and I'll find a, an actor that I want to um, be in my movie, and I'll just call that actor and <laughs> ask him to be a part oh, of the movie. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I realized this was a long time ago. Yeah. So I honestly did that. I actually went and got one of their videos, saw which, which studio produced their work. <laughs> happened to be Universal Studios. Wow. Called Universal Studios. <laughs> oh, this is great. I, actually, I'm going to mention names because this is true. Um, it was Tom Cruise. I thought he'd be great for the first book I had, which was Wouldn't The he? Emblem. Yeah. yeah. So I call. Uh, I, I write under one name, and, and, and my real name is a different name. So I call, and uh, I actually sent the book, to be honest with you. I actually sent the book to Universal Studios, to Tom uh-huh. Cruise, and his agent at the time, which was Paula Wagner. So um, I guess they had the book, and I call, and the person who answered the phone said, who are you calling about and I said I'm calling I'm I'm calling for Mr. Cruz and they go well who is this and I gave him my real name and then they said well um, does he know you're calling and I go yeah and what is this about I said it's about a book that I sent him that I'm trying to make a movie out of oh well you know they're in um, Universal Studios in Florida right now wrapping up a shoot let me give you the number there no kidding (laughs) because I had given him my real name and then I write under a different name and they knew the name was different than the book. Right. That I had mm-hmm. So I called down there. They gave me the number to the trailer that was Tom's trailer. And Paula <laughs> Wagner, who was his agent at the time, picked up the phone. Uh, she wanted to know what I was calling about and who gave him the number. And I told her. And she said, oh, so this is about the book. And she, I don't know if she really had seen the book or not. But she said, well, yeah, I'm sure he has. You know what? Tom left already and went back to L.A. I'm closing up the um, trailer now. And I'm going to be heading off this evening to go back to LA. Let me give you my number there. Oh my <laughs> Call gosh. me in a couple days. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, and this all has to do with agents, so hang in there. So anyway, so what happened was, is now a couple days had gone by. Apparently, Paula decided to do her homework. They probably found the book I sent them. Right. Realized from the information inside the book <laughs> that I was one in the same. So, <laughs> when I called, the first thing she did was start laughing. Oh, and no. she was giggling, and she says, you wouldn't happen to be um, James Kelly as well, would you? And I said, uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I am. And then that's when she really started laughing. She says, you're new at this, aren't you? And I said, yeah. And she <laughs> says, well, let me just give you some advice. First of all, we couldn't talk to you even if we wanted to. You have to have an agent. Right. Because in this business, we're not allowed to speak to you unless you have an agent. So that is my story and how I learned I had to go out and get an agent. So you were just too dumb to know you couldn't do it, huh? And it was innocent. <laughs> I sw- it was so innocent. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't. I didn't lie. I didn't pretend to be someone yeah. I wasn't. But I didn't think about them thinking I was two different people either. That's amazing, though, that you got through to her I got through agent, to, her. to Tom Cruise's agent. Mm-hmm. That is amazing. And now she's his business partner. Wow. <laughs> Um, but anyway, uh, that's why you need an agent. Because if you go out there knocking on doors without an agent, you're going to get rejected. They're not going to get anywhere. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. 
All right, um, Kevin, you have an agent. Can you explain to us a little bit about how you went about that? Yes, I attend uh, writers' conferences, and so I went to the American Christian uh, Fiction Writers' Conference. I think it was the third one I went to in um, St. Louis, and I went there and, and pitched my book. I, it was my first novel, Silent Night, Holy War, and it's about a church that's attacked by terrorists on Christmas Eve during a Christmas Eve uh, candlelight service and how the pastor and the church struggle to rebuild their lives and rebuild the church from the attack. And so I, I, I had practice pitches with my Henderson Writers Group, and I pitched it to other people and got no, 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 and uh, went to Terry Burns with a Heartline agency. And he's, he's, uh, he's a true cowboy. I mean, he wears a cowboy hat, and he lives in Texas, and, <laughs> and he writes westerns yeah. himself, too, and uh, pitched the book, and he said, you know, this sounds good, and send me 50 pages. So great. So I sent him 50 pages. He liked it. And then I sent him the manuscript, and he liked it. So... And that was a couple years ago. And, and th- this isn't one of those happily ever after stories. Right. I still am not published as far as novels. You know, I've published anthologies. I've published articles. But I haven't made that leap into a, an agent represents me, finds a publisher, and gets a novel published. Mm-hmm. So. But you at least accomplished the task of getting an agent, which is just, that, just as difficult. That's a big difficult. hurdle, yeah. It's just mm-hmm. as difficult to get an agent sometimes as it is to find a publisher. That's true, yeah. And there are publishing houses out there that you can approach that you don't have to have an agent for. Um, yeah, it's a little tougher. And you, you can query uh, a publisher, and they get uh, like 300 query letters a month. And so they they just whip through them. And so you better have a, a, a knock-them-out-of-the-park great query letter if you want to stand out and not end up in the slush pile. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Eric, you were telling me earlier that agents actually sometimes contact you. Yeah, in fact, I was planning on on working with independent publishers as well as literary agents, but I hadn't actually started reaching out yet because, again, the the site's only been up for about a month and a half now. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just got a a cold call one day from a, a, a literary agent in San Diego, and... The first thing she said was, I love your website. I love the concept. And, it's, and she said, it's going to be really big. And I went, that's good to hear from somebody who might be my nemesis. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> um, but but what, what she said was it, it, the site itself is a good proving ground for uh, new and aspiring authors right. that are looking for agents because now she can just go through the site and read their bios and their, and their overviews of their books and pick and choose directly from a, a, a people that are that are you know basically have their hands up looking for uh, looking to be noticed. Wow, that's an upside down way for agents and uh, authors to get together. That's great. Yeah, it's yeah. really yeah. yeah. So your service really has a lot of advantages to it in that respect. Because actually, yeah, the author wouldn't even know someone's looking at it unless you know you let them know. So. Well, yeah, it, it's a two way street. That's pretty yeah. cool because the authors can look at it. The authors can pitch themselves, but the agents can actually go there so and actively pursue authors. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, on the agent topic, I mean, I've talked to a lot of aspiring writers over the couple, last couple of years, and they, they, they suffer from this thing called, what do I call analysis paralysis? You know, it's really they're, they've written a book proposal, and they send it out to a bunch of agents, and they're not writing their book because they're waiting to be picked up. And so I, yeah, I, knew this right. woman, mm-hmm. I, I knew this woman who spent nine months trying to get somebody to pick up her book. But in that nine months, she could have written it. <laughs> you, you know what else is tragic, Eric, is there are a lot of good, good authors out there that write good books that can't write a decent proposal. Yeah. You know, and how do, you, how, do you, how do you communicate well what your book is about? But I think the good thing about what Eric started here in, is that – you don't. Ha- you're not even writing a proposal. If he has right. agents looking at the site anyway, they're going to base it on what they see. And all right. books have a synopsis on the back to give you an idea of what the story's about. So uh-huh. in a in a way, you know, you supersede that and don't even need it because that agent's looking at right. you. You know, yeah. so that's great. But but I I still I still strongly encourage people to plan their book before they write it, and that's in essence writing a book proposal. And so I, I built I built a questionnaire within the site Great. where you can go through and answer a bunch of questions, figure out what you're writing for, um, figure out who your audience is going to be, 
the focus of your book and actually put in chapters of your book or, or at least outline summaries of, of chapters. And then you can actually share that securely to, with anybody you want. So if you, if you have a literary agent on the hook, then you can actually send them a URL and a password and then go in and look at your book proposal online. So you've built in the book that's proposal cool. in yeah. the fourteen ninety five a month. Yeah, yeah. well, that, that, that's actually free. You get that just for signing up. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't charge you anything to use the site until you want to activate your book project page. Wow, that's cool. That's pretty um, cool, yeah. Uh, I will tell you this. This is another experience of mine, <laughs> of hard knocks. Uh, one of the things you have to learn when you're looking for an agent, this is so important. Um, when I was told I needed an agent, I didn't know how to go about getting one. I went through the literary agents book in the library. Right. And I was researching, and I found one, and I called. Well, I, I, I actually approached several. And the one I called, um, they didn't charge a fee per se, a monthly fee for their service, but what they did is they said, um, you know, you have to send us X amount of dollars to cover postage and everything else. I'm yeah. thinking, oh, well, that yeah. sounds reasonable to me. But unfortunately, when you're going after an agent, that that is not a good thing either. No, it's not. Um, because yeah. what happens is is those type agents will take on three or 400 clients because you're paying them up front anyway, whether you think you are or not. When they say you're paying for postage, you're really paying for them in advance. And um, they make a good living at that. So I learned the hard way with that as well. That is not the way you go about getting an agent. You're my kind of guy. You're, you, I mean, I'm the same. Ready, fire, aim, you know? Ready, fire, aim. <laughs> well, you know, when you're new in this business and you don't have anyone to guide you, which yeah, you is what this show is about, to do, is yeah. to you know, enlighten people and let them know what's out there. Right. You're stumbling along and you're doing anything. You're desperate. You're doing anything and everything you can to try and, and get yourself noticed. Yeah. Um, and you're going to make mistakes along the way, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's just no. that you will. We're hoping that we can help you eliminate a few of those mistakes by this show. So, great. By, by the way, by the way, I'm um, there. I don't know about every state, but I, I'm certain that California does, and Nevada probably does as well. Um, there's a website for the government where you can actually check to see if a literary agent is actually licensed and a legitimate liter literary agent. Um, because there's, you, you mentioned that they were charging somehow up front, oh, right? And mm -hmm. it, it's illegal in the state of California for a literary agent somebody who calls himself an agent, to charge any fees whatsoever. Well, actually, and the it, way they were getting around that, Eric, wasn't they weren't saying they were charging you a fee. They were saying they needed um, X amount of funds to cover postage when they sent your book out, and that's how they got around it. Huh. <laughs> There's another website, too, that helps. It's called Predators and Editors. Oh, yes. Yeah, you remember so, that? Yeah. yeah, and they and they call through the, the snakes and uh, identify mm. them for mm -hmm. you so you know right. who, who's... Uh, yeah, who, it, it, but it's terrible, not. but there's a lot of people out there. That's how they make their living. So, you, right. it, you know, it's, yeah. you just have to be very careful. Yeah. Um, Kevin, I have a couple more fun facts we're going to read because okay. we might be able to create a little conversation. Now, that, how would you like to take number one? Sure. Beatrix Potter, having been rejected by various publishers, proceeded to self-publish a limited edition of The Tale of Peter Rabbit in 1901. Only 250 copies were printed. Publisher Fred Warren, who had also rejected Peter Rabbit, changed his mind when he saw the finished product. It seemed the tale of Peter Rabbit had commercial po possibilities after all. It was published with color illustrations in 1902. <laughs> Since then, Ms. Potter's picture book about a flopsy mopsy and cottontail has sold over 40 million copies. And it's and still, still selling. selling. Wow, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. So when you have your self-published book there, just keep in mind uh, this mm -hmm. little tale right here. And that. <laughs> yeah, there was another one uh, lately called The Shack, mm -hmm. and that was self-published, and that sold millions of copies. Yeah, we went over last yeah. show on um, there's a couple of new authors out there who have done unbelievably well in the ebook market. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. So, um, Eric, would you like to read number two? Sure thing. Um George Bernard Shaw is quoted as having said, a life spent making mistakes is not only more honorable, but more useful than a life spent doing nothing. Mm, that's so oh, true. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely uh, true. Yeah. Groucho Marx once said, the secret of life is honesty and fair dealing. If you can fake that, you've got it made. <laughs> uh, that kind of goes along with some of the topics we're talking about with agents and so forth. Um, 
the last one is I like uh, pre- prefixes. Prefixes. Uh, I read them. Sometimes I do not read any further. That's a quote from Malcolm Lowry. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, we're going to talk a little bit about marketing and distribution because it does play into what Eric does as well. And I'm, I think from what you were explaining to me earlier today, you your company deals a little bit with that, or certainly when it comes to the eBooks. Sure. Um, and, and I was describing the way the, the book project page transforms from a crowdfunding page to a, uh, a book pre-sales page, and then finally into a, a marketing and sales page. Because of all the effort you've spent promoting that one page, um, when people search for some topic that's within your description on Google, end up at your page, there are links directly to whatever, if, if you publish through Lulu or uh, have a book on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or any, any other site out there, mm-hmm. uh, you can actually put the links in and have direct uh, links to those uh, basically shopping carts where you, people can buy your book. Okay. So any of the ebook distributors, you would be able to link right into those as well then? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Good. All right. Um, you, one of the things that we're talking about, when, when someone goes to your site, they are basically, they're completely a self-publisher. There is no um, vanity involved or anything like that. It's, you, it's up to you to make the book happen. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the important thing to point out about Author is we don't a- offer directly any uh, services, um, a, a, no, no writing coaching, uh, no uh, upsells of any sort. Uh, we don't actually do the publishing for you. Um, you can use the site to promote your book to literary agents. You can uh, and, and collect uh, crowdfunding donations so that you can afford to maybe take some time off work and actually focus on writing your book. Um, with the hopes of either self-publishing <clears throat> or getting picked up by a, uh, a publisher. Right. And, again, you would you explain one more time what crowd publishing is? Oh, sure. Crowd- crowdfunding is basically it's, it's having people donate. It, it's, it's having a lot of people donate a little bit of money. So 5 10 15 $20 per person. If you get 100 500 or or 1,000 people donating to you $10, then you can afford to – uh, take some time off work and write your book and possibly even self-publish it. Hire a good copy editor, hire a good proofreader. Uh, if you want to do a really quality book, you can hire a layout person and have a quality uh, um, you know, book cover design. Hey, Eric, can you help me here? Um, so those are, th- are those investors? No, no, no they're, they're not investors. These are people that are donating small amounts of money to you with the expectation, typically, it's, it's either out of good, their own goodwill or they're expecting to get some sort of incentive from you, like a copy of your book when it's published. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, hmm. I, I'm going to enlighten him a little bit of what happened with me, and actually how the show came about is I helped a young lady with her book. Uh-huh. She came to me. She had it roughly written. She needed to have it edited, and that's where I stepped in. And then she was uncertain what to do with the book once it was edited. So what I did then is, is I helped her um, package the book as far as cover design and everything, but she didn't have the money. To, right. to get it published. Mm-hmm. So we went to another site, <laughs> and we went after funding. And actually, crowdfunding is what we went after. What she did then is she took social media, which is your Twitter, your Facebook, your Google, uh-huh. and um, she basically told her friends or acquaintances that were friends on her, her, her websites. And she would say, like, for $3, you'll ha- I'll send you a free copy of the e-version. For $10, I'll send you a free copy. You know, if you donate, it's all donations. If you right. donate $10, I'll give send you a free copy of my book when it comes out. Or if you send $25, i will send you a free copy of my hardback. And from there, the incentives can go on. It depends on what you want to do. We did, all, right. we did um, dinner with the author. Um, there's Ooh. various ways you can do this. And there, it's, it's – it's, it's donations. It, you're not, you, you know. Hmm. Okay. But for each level of donation, they get X, you know, in return. Okay. But but mm-hmm. it's in no way a, a, an investment vehicle, um, although that is now legal as well through the uh, the legislation that just passed a couple of, uh, about a month ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but th- this is strictly people. It, it, it it's like you're playing a guitar and you have a cup out front and people walk by <laughs> and they like what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, that's a good. So okay. they drop in five bucks. Yeah. Okay. And there are a lot of t- people who will actually say, you know, I like your idea, I like your project, and they'll donate, and, and they don't even want an incentive. They just want to see you get published. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. So. Hmm. Okay. 
Um, do you have anything else you'd like to add to that, Eric? Well, I, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to try to sell stuff, but I do have a, a free ebook that I put together called Get Paid to Write Your Book. Uh, you can buy it for a 99 cents at Amazon, or you can get it for free at the author website. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a follow-up book to that called Publish Your Ebook or How to Publish Your Ebook, which is simple steps on how to uh, move your book forward. Um, and then the, 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 the third book in that series is How to Make Your Book a, a Bestseller. And each one of those books builds upon the previous one. The first one, the reasons it's free is because it's primarily promoting the whole crowdfunding and book pre-sales concept. Mm -hmm. um, but th those those three little ebooks uh, should be able to empower you to uh, write your book, uh, get paid to write your book, and uh, promote your book. And I'd also like to point out that when you keep saying author dot com, it's spelled a u t h r dot com. Not I, I appreciate that. Yeah, a -U -T -H -R. because I've been I've been told that it's a terrible a terrible name for the radio. <laughs> well, we'll we'll just say it's www dot a u t h r dot com. Um, so when you're looking for author dot com, just go to a u t h r dot com. Thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome. And if you need more information, by the way, on um, Eric's website, uh, you can go to the Aspects of Writing website at www.aspectsofwriting.com dot com, and you'll see a little tag at the bottom of that page for Eric's um, company. Great. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's talk a little bit more here about the self-publishing because since that's what Eric's company really sets you up to do is to self-publish, um, I think people need to understand that when you're going after publishing, and, and even if you're going to use his service, you're, you're, you cannot go through a vanity publisher. Well, I guess you could, though, Eric, through yours. Is that correct? Because you're just raising the money to get it published, so if you want to pay a vanity publisher, you could. Yeah, when I, when I send out a marketing email to a writing coach or a vanity publisher, what I tell them is that uh, send your clients to me. I will help them raise the money they need to pay for your services. Ah, very good. Uh -huh. And it, it makes logical sense to me because if, if I don't have the knowledge or the skill set or, or the wherewithal to actually pub, be, be a self-publisher and publish my own book, I'm going to want to go to a vanity press or a, a self-publishing house uh, a small independent that may need some money up front, um, and I may not have the funds to do that. Right. So with Author, you could actually raise a thousand dollars, or two thousand dollars, or three thousand dollars, and go back and get that those skills that you can, that you don't have from people that have them. I do have one question for you with your site in regards to your site, and I know this is probably where it's a little different than the others. Right now, your site is set up. Is it specifically for authors, or do you go into other um, aspects of writing as well? All we do, one hundred percent, is books. Okay, all right. That that's that's good to know. Um, and in fact, the whole the whole site is based around, uh, like, like I mentioned, e cover builder, e book cover builder, um, uh, the the book proposal uh, uh, builder. Um, it, every, all those services are built around helping authors get their book published. Okay, all right. And I I would say that e um, um, self-publishing is is changing, and that it used to have this oh, scotoma of it was just people more vanity publishing. It was right. pretty much vanity. You were publishing. looked down on if you were self-publishing. Yeah, and now because the big publishers aren't putting the money into the writers like they used to, a, a lot of your writing, a lot of your marketing is your own. You mm -hmm. still have yeah. to go out and, and and push your book. So the advantage of of a big publisher isn't like it used to be. Right, and actually a service like what Eric offers helps motivate the author, to be honest with you. Right. Because now you are forced to go out there, and, and it really is up to you to go out there and, and push this project on his site, to go out there to your Facebooks and to your Googles, to the friends right. at work, um, to the friends you know off work, and say, hey, can, you know, if they, if they want a copy, say, instead of buying it from me, can you go to this site and you know, fund it there? Because you get more notoriety that way. I mean, it's really a way of advertising if you think about it because you're bringing people to more attention to your website. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's true. And, and one, one powerful aspect of that is, is you know that your friends and families, uh, family and followers and fans will probably buy a copy of your book once you publish it. Correct. With, with right. the author service, you can simply say, 
can you pre-purchase a copy of the book before I publish it? And that way, you're, you're assured that you have sales. Now, I need you, you to explain that, what you just said, about sure. the pre-author as opposed to the donation thing. Sure. Uh, do- donation is, is fairly straightforward, and you did a really good job explaining it. Where uh, crowdfunding, you market your book, you market market your book page out to your friends, families, uh, fans, and followers through Facebook and what have you. Um, they come in and they actually make a donation, and uh, for potentially an incentive of a book or something. Um, the the pre sales is simply a way for people to pay you up front. Mm-hmm with the anticipation that you're going to send them a copy of their book once it's published. And what's, what's interesting is the big publishers, the traditional publishing houses, they go to Amazon, they go to the big uh, outlets, and they take pre-orders all the time for books that aren't going to be published for three months or six months out. Right. So th- there's, mm-hmm. they have this, they've always had this advantage, this uneven playing field, where, where they can actually pre- or take pre-orders through Amazon for full price uh, from fans of that author. Yeah. Uh, sorry, author. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we're doing is we're allowing the independent uh, author to do the same thing. Level the playing field. Yeah. Their book. yeah. We had an author on last week, or you know, two weeks ago on our show, who who actually is doing just that. Oksana. You, you, oh, you know, uh-huh. right. She actually has an agent. She found a publisher, and they're pre-selling her book for her. Oh, that's there cool. you go. Now, Eric, you uh, just for clarity, you you. You say it's a donation, and it is literally and figuratively. Th- mm-hmm. This is not a tax deductible donation, though, is it? Is it? it, it it's not. It's okay. not because yeah. you're not a charitable organization. Right, and not a C three hundred one or yeah, whatever yeah. it is. Right. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. But, but, you, but the, from a tax situation, although I should qualify by saying you should talk to your tax advisor. But from a tax situation, unless a single a single donor gives you more than six hundred dollars or $600 or more, you don't have to declare the money that you raise through the site as income. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, and that, that's the advantage as well. Hmm. Like okay. I know with Sonia's, we, we topped it off at 500 right. And believe yeah. it or not, there were, that, there were a couple huh? of people who gave. Wow. One gave four and one gave five. That's great. So, you know, it's very realistic to do your book on a site like this. Hmm. So, Well, we're about to wrap up the show. Um, I'm going to let you know that on the next show the topic is going to be writing music and we're going to explore the techniques and what it takes to get published as a songwriter Uh, my guest will be Nancy Abercrombie and I would like to thank my guests Kevin Parsons and Eric Bowman Um, you can find links and information about all my guests on the Aspects of Writing website at www.aspectsofwriting.com Aspects of Writing broadcast live every Monday at 9 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time here on KLAV and on the Internet at www.klav1230am.com. And we rebroadcast every Wednesday on VegasAllNetRadio.com at 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, future air dates and lineups can also be found at the www.aspectsofwriting.com website. Please sign our guest book while visiting Aspects of Writing, and you can post questions and comments on our, our um, guest book. And you can email us at aspectsofwriting at yahoo.com. Remember, if you can dream it, you can write it. <laughs>